What's up? Good morning, Game Changers. What a great day. What a great day. Don't you love it when your monitor is right in front of you, just working, and you can see everything in the name of Jesus? We're getting there. We're getting there. We just don't like to do it at the beginning of the show. We like to start this. We like to do it like, we like to remind ourselves of what a caveman, caveman had. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we like to start off without technology. You know what I'm saying? Mike's no not clock. working years. This whole show is technology. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, we, we ease our way into it. It's like we, we like rise and fall by the button. sun. We go backward. That's like a second time in a week I refer to Benjamin Button. Good you know? movie. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Well, welcome to Game Changer. I'm David Ville. I'm here with Ashton, my daughter. I'm here with... Hey, now it's a mess. Sad, dude. A mess. <laughs> <laughs> a mess. I love it. We yes. have to, we, it's a, The mess is the acronym for... Uh, hold on. Mike Ezra Sam. Mike Ezra Sam. M-E-S. Mess. Gotcha. Now we got two M's. So we got a mess. I'm not the uh, mess, I'm just the uh. mess. Exactly, I'm a mess. So what's up, guys? I hope you're having a great day so far. We're talking faith factor. That's what we're diving into today. And um, I'm hoping we can get, I was going to plan this. Maybe tomorrow we can do this. And I'd like you to start today. How about this? I would love to have a, can we Can we take a caller or no? Uh, I'd have to get it set back up. No, we no, can do it tomorrow. No, okay, yeah. So yeah, just say no. Just say no. Yeah, let's say get it set back up. Just say I just say no. We can't do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow we, can. we can set it up. All right, all right. But we do have just so you know, we have it in the uh, opening there with the phone number. So there could be countless people that try to call because it does say call in. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So where you're calling, I don't know. But um, tomorrow we're gonna have some call-ins. <laughs> but today, what we'll do, I want to do this. We have some Faith Gear shirts. Um, we're gonna be uh, announcing something very soon. We're meet, meeting with the t- crew today on the new drop of faith gear uh we've had a lot going on but we're getting ready to um, have some announcements on that but we do have some shirts in the store i want to give away like five or six and all you got to do really is comment to have a chance so i want you to comment on today's show with some substance I'm, i don't mean like amen hallelujah, you preach it brother you know that kind of thing i mean like give us some comments from your heart and what we're going to do as a team is we're going to look at these comments some of them are going to be obvious, and they're going to be the the five or six best comments on faith uh, on Facebook or LinkedIn. If you're watching, if you're listening to this uh, on Spotify or Apple or Google, men get get into the chat in the morning. If you have nothing going on, we'd love to have you. Um, and we're going to give those away just for some good comments today. How about that? And uh, so let's talk about faith versus facts. Faith versus facts. All right. So. We talked about faith factor in in placing in, you know, factor, factoring in faith into everything that you do, right? And when you when you do that, I mean, we we really started out talking about God math, and when you talk about factor, factor is a mathematical term, right? It changes the outcome of things, and and so we need to factor faith in. Then we talked about over the last couple of days. We really finished it yesterday. If you notice, guys, I know Ashton wasn't with us, but yesterday we stayed really on that one topic of expectation almost the entire podcast which was the last ingredient so we talked about the formula of faith and then today i want to talk about faith versus facts right because the thing that will kill your faith faster than anything else the enemy uses this the enemy is the faith killer right but he uses facts to kill your faith that's why the bible says if you notice the bible says we walk by faith not by sight yeah. i mean because god knew that if we could if we if, if we went by what we see Right, that we would that we would want to stop, mm-hmm. that we'd want to give up, that we would think that we couldn't make it. And I'm reminded of um, of Simon Peter. It's a perfect example of walking by faith, not by sight. If you really want to see, I mean, it happened all through the Bible, but one really obvious version of that was when Peter saw Jesus walking on water. You know, and he said he had spent all this time with them, right? So he knew that this guy fed five thousand. Matter of fact, they were in the boat. And they had just left the shore from feeding the 5,000. He watched this God math take place in front of him. Watched 5,000 men, women, and children get fed and watch this little boy go home with leftovers. They get in a boat and they're faced with a storm. Jesus was praying and the disciples were freaking out. And here comes Jesus walking by, right? And then Peter looks at him, the same Jesus that he just watched perform this miracle and say, hey, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, come on. So Peter gets out of the boat. He does something that most the other disciples didn't do. And most of us probably wouldn't have the guts to do, right? He put the ball of his foot, you know, on water. Mm. 
Think about that. I don't know how much faith you got to have to put the ball <laughs> of your foot on water in the middle of a storm, but that's some faith. Yeah. So he had faith. But think of this. When it says walk by faith, not by sight, he, he, you, see, you see that play out because he gets out of the boat. He begins to truck it towards Jesus. But then all of a sudden, the waves that are already going on, the wind that's blowing, the storm that's raging, probably the disciples behind him. Can you imagine them? A couple of them. Like Doubt and Thomas was in that boat. I mean, Thomas, right? Thomas that doubted. What if Thomas was like, man, are you crazy? Peter, get back in this boat. You're going to sink. What are you doing? All of these voices from around him. And all of a sudden, his eyes went off of faith, which is Jesus, and went on to what he was seeing and what was around him and what happened. Well, can I say one thing too? Yeah. Real quick. Uh, and excuse Matias, he's taking a shot of video and you can see his legs right here. But no, that's no not problem. Important. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I always thought whenever I heard that story, like they always talked about it being like a really intense storm and like all this stuff. So like I always like to imagine that his faith was even more so than we can think about because if you're in a storm and they're on the boat and whatever and he's having to stand up and step over the side of that boat, that boat's got to be up and down moving. Mm-hmm. It. So his balance must not be very good. So he's not like a nice easy step where he can yeah. just like – Oh, it's just like walking like down the street. No, he's like he's having to focus on nothing else but what's going on right here in front of him. And like I always thought that was like that's a super unwavering amount of faith that you have to have to say like not only is this storm crashing, this boat's moving, I can barely stand up, but now I'm about to stand on water. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to yeah. walk where natural men sink. That's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. You know. But not only that, we went to Israel 3 years ago our family and we saw the boats Remember the boat? We yeah. saw the boat. I mean, you're, you, this isn't Titanic, guys. I mean, I'm not, we're not talking about a cruise ship. Like sometimes you're talking in, about you a know, dinghy. Yeah, in our Sunday. Yeah, exactly. You're talking about like a little dinghy boat. Because the, when, 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 I, when I went to Sunday school, I had this vision of like this bigger, like a boat at least like Pirates of the Caribbean. You know what I mean? Like they're on this like, you know, Jack Sparrow boat. Right, well, you know, yeah. you see them paint it on the pictures and stuff that you see growing up, and like they got to fill up the picture. So it's like yeah. <laughs> you got to make the boat bigger. <laughs> yeah, like our Toss and Jonah shirts. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. have them coming off of a you know pretty good size old but good size boat. Yeah. I mean, it was really kind of tossed. And Jonah was like, "Hey man, just pushed him over." Into the, <laughs> you know, just pushed him over yeah. to the water. These boats were small, so this storm was. And you also think, you know, Amen. why were these disciples? Man, it was rain and storm. I get it. Okay, because this boat was small, yeah. and these guys were scared because this thing was probably about. It was held together by like you know like a beaver just chewed this this wood and you know they took it and wrapped it up with some twine you know what i mean like it wasn't like you know it wasn't like bolted and welded together <laughs> you understand what i'm saying like it was cracking probably beneath them and and so understand that fear was real but faith overcame that but then he walked by sight and he sunk you know what i mean and and so i don't know i just think that that's a really good picture of faith versus facts right there and i think in our life you know obviously we're not challenge with walking on you know water like that every day but i mean what's the, what's the water that you have to walk on today to make it to the end you know what's the water that you figuratively have to walk on today you know to to to, to you know to not fail you know some of you are facing you know mountains or facing seas and facing storms and facing water you know jesus is there but the reality is what you've got to walk through to get to him seems like you're not going to be able to make it. And I think that's just as real for us today as it was for Peter literally that day. Amen? Yeah. So what, what facts are we facing? What's, let's talk about that for a second. We haven't really got into the, to the notes, but faith versus facts. I mean, you know, those things constantly are butting heads in the word of God and they constantly butt heads in the life of a believer. What do you guys think? Anyone? Um, to me, I mean, we talked about it a day or two ago. Faith and facts are mm-hmm. like the literal counter opposites to each other. Cause faith is illogical versus facts are supposed to be absolutely logical. Right. It would be like faith versus science. Science is all based in logic. Science is all based in what can be seen, what can be measured, what can be figured out through a process versus faith is like, you're basically throwing something into the wind and you're basically saying, I believe that this is going to go exactly the way it needs to go. It's mm-hmm. just the counter. They're, they're the counter opposites to each other to have faith. You have to basically throw logic out the window. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, um, having faith meant, um, I've talked about this before, you know, I was struggling financially and having faith was okay. Even though I'm struggling financially, I'm having an issue paying my bills. I have to start tithing. So I'm, committing to giving more money away than money that I don't necessarily have to give away Mm -hmm. in faith that you're going to have my back on this versus facts is like, well, why would I give more money away when I already am struggling to pay what I've got to pay? Why, why does that make any sense to me? 
Well, God, God yeah. Man. Huh? I just said, God, yeah. you took the word. I said, God. <laughs> did I, say, I was like, did my voice just come out like a woman? <laughs> I was like, it's, I, she, she is my daughter. And, you know, God math. If, yeah, that's like actually a pretty, go ahead. You, want, you guys something to say that? I mean, sure, I'll take it now. Now I like, feel like I lost my train of thought. But God math. You said, um, you said God math. I mean, yeah, God math. Like that, that makes sense. It doesn't make sense like to the natural. And I think like when what we see are, and I think that's what's so cool about us versus, you know, the Lord, like his vision is so much more vast and beyond us. Like we see like this way and he sees like this way, the entire big picture that we don't get to see. And so when we like view it from that point of view, like Mm -hmm. I've heard it said before, like we only walk towards what we're looking at. Like, like if I'm looking this way, I'm not going to walk this way. Right. Um, right. And I think that's the amazing thing about God. Like we almost walk blindfolded and um, that it doesn't make sense that we would be, be blessed. But like when we do that, when we tithe, when we give these things that don't make sense, it doesn't make sense that we'd be blessed in that process. Um, but exactly what you said, God math. Yeah, God math. And, uh, you know, the, the thing, and I want to say this, it's it's the Bible. And we're going to we're talking about tie this for a second, because I think it's important because Mike brought it up. But I mean, it's a it's such a form of God math that it's like God saying, hey, listen, I'm going to I'm going to bless you with with more with 90 percent. than you could bless be blessed with 100 percent. Yeah. Like it just any economist anywhere, any banker, anybody that's in the money would say that just doesn't make sense. Well, what's the it larger number? Ninety percent or one hundred percent? One hundred percent, exactly. So, how can you? How does it logically make sense that the smaller number is going to give you more? It doesn't. It doesn't. And you know what? That's why I said that. Really, God math doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. It's it, 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 it doesn't add up, but it does. You know, in other words, it doesn't add up, but it does. If that makes sense, yeah. I know that I keep saying the same thing, and I'm hoping <laughs> I'm, I'm like, can they get in my brain and understand what I'm thinking? <laughs> it's like it doesn't add up. Like math does. One plus one is two. Well, 100% is greater than 90. But when you factor, and that's the word we're talking about, when you factor in faith, when you factor in God, it it changes the equation. And I think even sometimes, like, it's not a matter of, like, us getting, you know, more and getting, like, oh, you know, I'm going to tithe, so then I'm, like, going to be getting more money and God's going to just like continually give me more and more and more. I think sometimes like the blessing that he gives us in that and just like when we trust him with that, I've heard it said it's less about our relationship with the church when we tithe and it's more about our relationship with God. Mm. It's deepening, deepening our trust. Like our, he's our provider. Like, and when we, when we do that, and that's just one example of this, but if we're going to talk about it, like in this, you know, illustration, um, it's less about like what we can get from God and more Mm -hmm. about like, what we can like receive in our relationship with him. Right. If that makes sense. We're, we're deepening our trust in him. We're deepening. And honestly, like we're going to leave more free of that financial hold, even if it's not a matter of like, Oh, now I have way more money because like, it's not that prosperity gospel, right? but it's, it's, it's not about just getting more money. It's about doing it God's way. Because really, what exactly. do we want? What do we want money for? We want money, and I know we're not talking about just money today, but we are now for a second. We're talking about God math, but when you really look at money, what do you really want money for? You want money for peace. You want yeah. money for freedom. You don't want money just for things. I mean, look, money for things is fleeting. It doesn't last. What happens when you have all the things that money can buy, mm-hmm. but you have more money? Things won't make you happy. So you do it for peace. You do it for freedom. You do it to supply for your family, for legacy. You do it to, you know, to be able to bless, you know, to give into the kingdom, what have you. So what really what tithing does... And if I can kind of yeah. kind of help with with that with Ashton at that point, and I think is that it that it you get what God intends for you to get when you do it His way, but it's a factor of faith. Yeah, I just right. I just spawned a new idea for a shirt in my head. Ninety is greater than a hundred. Ooh, mm. child, love it. I could preach. Preach. I just spawned something in my Copy, head. Copyrighted right here on Game Changer <laughs> Podcast. If anybody's interested. <laughs> but that just spawned in my head. When we were talking about. It. I'm like, dude, that would actually be kind of dope because it would it would make. Because I always think about things like that. Like, would it make somebody question, what do you mean? Mm. And honestly, people would go, wait, that doesn't make sense. Love it. Love it, Mike. Love it. You I, sold me when you said it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm in. Make sure you write that down so you don't forget it. I haven't forgot it. I well, we got it on it. recording. Never mind. We'll look it back. We'll look back. And we'll know I, who stole it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to read a couple comments here in a minute. But before we do, I want to say this. Facts of life can be unfavorable. So, you know, let's look at this for a second. Let's talk about what that water can be. Let's talk. So we're talking about, you know, we started out talking about Peter getting out of the boat, walking to Jesus, right? 
from the moment he got out of the boat, even beforehand, because Ezra pointed out the boat was rickety, the storm, you know, all of the things he had to overcome, then the fact that he had to walk on water and then overcome the waves and winds for a period of time, right? So let's look at the facts of life. What's that water look like to you? What's that mountain look like? So spouse walks out of the marriage, someone's watching, right? That's unfavorable fact. It happened, it's unfavorable. A company, there's a ton of this that went on in the last year. Companies call for layoffs, right? Just when you thought you were safe, right? When you thought you were getting into your groove, hitting your stride, right? You get the pink slip and you get a severance package. That's an unfavorable fact. There's many watching right now. How about this one? Many of you have gotten or received a doctor's report, came back, right? Positive for a brain tumor, positive for cancer, positive for something that you weren't expecting, right? That's an unfavorable fact. When a child you love chooses not to love you back, right? The way you hope for it, that's an unfavorable fact. There's families that are broken mm-hmm. right now watching. So can I just say this? We know that life is full of unfavorable facts. But here's the deal. We can put this in the notes, Sam. But faith, factor in faith, ready? But faith looks into the storm of facts and causes you to believe that God is in the facts with you. Yeah. I'm going to say that again right there. Faith looks into the storm of facts because it's happening and causes you and I to believe that God is in the facts with you. And if he's in the boat with you, I said this before, but there's, a, there's another passage where the disciples were in a storm, in a boat. Jesus was sleeping. Can I just tell you if that boat would have went, they were scared that the boat was what? Going to sink. Going to sink. Yeah. If that boat would have sunk, Jesus would have sunk. He was in the boat sleeping. Jesus ain't sinking. Jesus is not going down. So can I just tell you, faith, factor. <laughs> faith looks into the storm of facts and causes us to believe that God is in the facts with us. And if he's with us, can I just tell you, man, who can be against us? You yeah. said something in that passage that hit me hard because it's something I've been dealing you, with. I, we saw that. You coughed. You must have coughed your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. No, but it's something I've been dealing with because um, my daughter's in the very like attached to uh, my wife phase right now. Mm-hmm. So when you said when a child chooses not to love you back the same way, like it's really, really, really tough to deal with. Like she's attached to my wife at her hip like wherever she goes in the house like she's following her unless she's like glued to the tv and like i can't always get her attention so that one hit hard because it's something i'm struggling with right now and i'm still struggling to get my breath back after coughing up my coffee (laughs) got this i believe in you no i'm good (laughs) i support you from a distance (laughs) <laughs> are you okay mike so mike is uh yeah i'm in the middle of, of sending a message to somebody and the camera's on me because mike coughing his coffee in the middle of hacking it that's like choking like you're choking on like a, a brussels sprout you're like i just you metaphorically and, i just <laughs> I just and literally and you shove more and brussels metaphorically sprouts. choked on air Guys, so it's all good and you ch- word of wise don't eat brussels sprouts yeah mike, mike's drinking and choking on coffee so he drinks more He's like, it's the only way to get rid of it. I'm drowning. Hold on. I'm going to dive into that pool right there. <laughs> so, I, so I could increase the challenge. <laughs> no, but it was. It's something that hit That's hard. Like it me. is. The, the camera's on me while Mike's talking. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, it's something that it's, it's something difficult that I've had to deal with. Um, I shouldn't call out. Go ahead, Mike. You I, can, don't I, stop talking. <laughs> I couldn't hear what you said. I was talking to Ashton. <laughs> Anyway, we it's, apologize. Just it's just something I've dealt, I've dealt with recently because my my kid is in that phase where like I've legitimately sat there for hours reading articles on like when kids hit this phase, like where they become mm-hmm. attached and like how you're supposed to deal with it. Because like yeah. emotionally, like for me, like it's one of the hardest things to deal with is like I come home and I'm like, hey, baby. And she just runs off and goes and sees her mom. Yeah. It's like the toughest thing in the world for me to walk in the door and be like, <sighs> I just me. want love. <laughs> I just want love. Like, right, right. That's all it is. <laughs> well, when they get to that, a little bit older, they start running up and hugging your legs and stuff, and that's cool. I have those days, too. There's some days where she'll run up, and she's like, da-da, and she grabs my legs, and it's like the most heartwarming thing in the world. And there's other days where she looks at me, and she's like, mm, runs off. <laughs> I agree, so by the way. Elisa uh, Harvey said, roasted Brussels sprouts are yummy. That's the Brussels sprouts <laughs> I was talking about. You know, the ones that are like, like Ocean Prime has. It was just I mean, funny that that was like the first thing yeah, that I'm came not, to your mind. I'm not talking about like, you know, like Leave it like to we Beaver, it, Russell, you Brussels sprouts, you know, like, you know, from the old days. I still days have no gross. idea what Leave it to Beaver is. It was a TV show. <laughs> it's man. a TV show. I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. You watch Golden Girls. Just yeah, exactly. look at it. Because Jamie influenced me. <laughs> so, <laughs> as we regress. All right. So, or digress, right? Digress. Um, digress. Faith will be tested. So, how about that scripture, guys? One of my favorite scriptures 
is in James when it says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your, testing of your faith produces patience. It's not because I want patience. N- none of us here, right, want that. The reason I love that verse so much is it gives you hope in the middle of it. The times when I love that verse is when I'm in the middle of going through something. I look at it and I go, you know what? I'm coming through this. You ever, you ever done that in the middle of, you know, in the middle of going through a challenge when your faith is tested? Yeah. Looking at facts around you because look, we're humans and we can't help but look at facts. The bottom line is we count it all joy because the testing of our faith produces patience. It produces it already. You don't have to pray for it. Look, you're going to get the reason I think people say don't pray for patience is because you, you, you get practice with patience all the time. So, so let me ask you this. Um, how many have ever looked at a fact and then been challenged by a fact? And how many can maybe even can attest to this? Maybe you have a testimony on this or a story on this or a comment on this. You've, you've looked at a fact and then, and then you look at God's word and you say, this, this fact doesn't line up with God's word. Which, mm-hmm. one, which one am I going to believe? Yeah. I mean, how many have ever been confronted with it that direct? Any of you guys? Yeah, can you can think sure. of? I mean, we all have, right? But does anybody have a story on that, or is it maybe a comment? So you're looking at a, you're looking at this fact, whatever you're facing, this mountain, this ocean, this sea, this challenge, this obstacle. All right, and you then you then you read God's word. You know how it feels. You know what you're going through. You know what you're experiencing. You know how the what it feels like. You hate it, and you look at God's word and you see His word. It, he illuminates this scripture that that solves this, that addresses this. And then now you're faced with which one am I going to believe? Now I know if you're asked by your pastor, you believe the word of God, but I'm talking about when you're by yourself and you're choosing what decision to make, what to say, what action to make. Do I write the check or not? You know, do I step out of the boat or not? Does anybody have a situation where you're looking at those two and maybe a situation where you've made the wrong decision and maybe one where you made the right decision, how God's come through. Um, I had one where it was a few years back. I ended up stepping down from a church and that was, it was actually a very tough call for me because anybody who knows me knows that I'm loyal to whoever I either work with, um, serve with. Ashton's telling me my Enneagram number because I'm a loyalist. <laughs> I did the, I did the test and I, I turned he? out to be is a loyalist. He's definitely an Enneagram six. He wants to six? challenge it so hard. Yeah. But it's, but. I'm, but I mean, but I'm a loyalist. If you can ask, if you ask anybody I've ever served for, worked for, I'm loyal to my death. And when I was faced with a decision, it was, the fact was I'm loyal. I don't want to He just doesn't die place. very easy. <laughs> he was hard to get rid of. He's like a, you know, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> go ahead, Mike. I'm so sorry. You're test. Um, you're in the middle of testifying. Go ahead. But I was choosing between faith, uh, fact and faith. In faith, I was like, God, I don't want to leave. Regardless of the situation, regardless of any frustrations, regardless of what I feel, I don't want to leave. I'm loyal to serve here. I'm loyal mm-hmm. to the people I'm serving under. Mm-hmm. And God was telling me, no, you need to have faith that I'm maneuvering pieces in your life for the right way. And this is the time that you need to step away from where you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a really tough one for me to make because, any, like I said, anybody who knows me knows that I'm loyal to my death. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Anyone else? comment on that you're faced with faith you're faced with facts maybe you've chose maybe you have a story where you chose the wrong one maybe you have a testimony on how choosing the right one is what works out i mean i think that you know the thing about this is there's there's we're, con- we're constantly faced with these decisions small and large and you know the bible says that the small foxes spoil the vine sometimes we we feel like we have to have such a large story to impact yeah. someone's life but 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 the slow fade or the slippery slope starts with the small things yeah. It always does because the enemy knows. And that's why I love the scripture where the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if the enemy set out to kill you or destroy you in his actions, you'd see it coming hmm. five miles away. But he, he, he comes in to try to steal your joy, steal your peace, right? To steal your dreams, to steal your hope. He siphons it out. He slowly begins to steal it. So he can get you to a place where maybe one day he's able to, to destroy your dream or kill your dream or what have you. But he doesn't start off that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really stealing is his specialty. He's like the swiper on door. <laughs> swiper, no, swiping. That's what we need to tell the devil. Devil, no, deviling. <laughs> I don't know. Devil, no, deviling. Devil, no, devil. <laughs> devil, no, swiping. <laughs> <laughs> no stealing, no killing and destroying. <laughs> 
You're hey. right about that too. But the one thing he also does too is gets you just to question everything. Yeah. Sure, he does. question yourself, question your faith, question God, question <clears throat> the situation you're facing. Am I really, you know? You talked about another example of that. I have the exact same example, but the opposite. I was at a church years ago, and I felt the I felt the call of God saying, "Look, this is your time to step away. Yeah. I'm maneuvering pieces for you to be in the next place that I want you." And I ignored it. I said, no, this is where I'm at. I'm loyal. I'm not giving up on this. And it ended up that I burned every single bridge with every person at that church because mm-hmm. I ended up staying too long and mm-hmm. not following that. So mm-hmm. I, I, that was why when I came to the second time around, this time around, I was like, no, I'm going to listen. Like, mm-hmm. this is what I'm being called to do. This is what I'm being called to pull, like, to step away. I'm not going to ignore it this time. Because last time it had, like, almost, I couldn't redo what I had already done. It couldn't mm-hmm. be undone. Mm-hmm. So there's both examples there. Scroll down for a second. Let's try to wrap this up with a couple of, um, let's finish this up. Because I want to dive into tomorrow. Go down a little lower. I want to see where we're going to go into tomorrow. So, okay, just, let's just stay here for a second. So, you know, um, we, we talked, go back up, Mike, to the fifth verse. We talked about, we're talking about faith versus facts. I want to give you and break down this scripture. So count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the tri- testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work. And that's really the thing, right? Let it have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Hmm. The true proof of faith is faith that has been tested or put under a microscope and tried by the fires of life. That's Bible. The Bible talks about that. It talks about fire, that it, that it heats up gold and silver and the impurities rise to the top so that they can be skimmed off. That's how they, hmm. that's the purifying by fire. That's why it doesn't feel good. And we don't pray for it here's the thing it doesn't say pray for it it says let it have its perfect work you don't have to pray for it you're gonna you're going to experience it yeah you know one of the tattoos on ashton's arm that she has is you know representative of shadrach meshach and abednego which is the fourth man in the fire you don't have to ask for the fire you're going to you're going to walk through the fire of life multiple times they didn't ask for it they were just minding their business praising god and worshiping god and serving god just like Job, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, just like Daniel, just like, I mean, everybody in life, you're going to find yourself there, but let it have its perfect work, right? And let it be tried because the reality is our faith will be tested. But if we can learn to rejoice in suffering, you know, rejoice in suffering, not live a life of just like suffering. I got to sit in a pile of ashes, you know, and there was a period of time where Job felt sorry for himself, just scratching his boils, you know, sitting there. You know what I'm saying? When the the entire time he could have stood up and he could have said, you know what? I'm a man of God. I'm a child of God. And I'm mm-hmm. going to walk in the things of God. And he could have gotten himself out of these things faster. So if we learn to hope when God says nope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a, that's something we need to put in the comments. Or some of us need to hope when God says nope. I promise this. You'll come out as pure as gold. So yeah. we here's what I'm going to leave you guys with. And and, and, and we're going to read a couple comments. We'll go over a couple of minutes. But I want to read these comments. Um, don't allow your test. Don't allow mockers. Don't allow demonic attacks, right? At whatever level your test, something you're going to walk through mockers or somebody that's, that, that are, they're, they're people that are hating. They're people that are around you. Then you got the enemy, the demonic attack, right? Don't let any of those cause you to think something strange or foreign has happened to you. This is in, uh, Peter, uh, in first Peter. And it's interesting that Peter wrote this because he went through so many things, but he said, don't let strange things, don't let these things happen, uh, strange things, strange things uh, uh, or foreign things that are happening to you, right? Don't let these things take you off. And he goes on to say, he goes on to say, greatly rejoice, though now these things happen for a little while. If, if need be, you have been grieved by these trials, but he begins to say it's nothing in comparison to what you're going to experience in the rejoicing. Mm. Amen. When you make it through to the other side, when you come through into that place that God's called you and, um, you know, really, really cool. I, I want to be able to, uh, you can't see some of the comments. Can, can you I read some of them? Yeah, why don't you read some of Actually, the comments? Actually, Rod Bowers, um, I love that comment. I was reading it. I was like eyeing it. So I'm glad he asked me. I was like wanting to say something about it. Um, he said, God math means that I can accomplish more after age 72. And that's so true. If you still have breath in your lungs, God still has a plan for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you still can have that radical faith. You can still uh, have faith the size of a mustard seed that can move a mountain. Amen. So um, just wanted to encourage you. I think that's awesome that you said that. I've been eyeing it like the entire time. <laughs> Come on, man. God math. I love that. we got Rod Bowers. I, for such a time as this, Rod. Hey, Sam, won't you read Dumasani's comment? Uh, during, it's right below Rod Bowers. During this pandemic, I've always been holding on to uh, to believe Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all of these things, provisions will be added onto mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. We must continue to believe that in these times, uh, as we continue seek and lean on God, He will provide for and look after us. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff. Okay. Scroll up, as once you, you and Matthias, you guys read a couple comments up there. Let's remember what we're, we're done, guys, and these are all going to be submitted. We're going to give away a few uh, faith gear items tomorrow. And uh, so we wanted to do that based on comments. So uh, scroll up there. Let's see if there's any comments here we can read. And um, Dumisani Lutango. Hello. There is no calculator for God math. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Matias said Dumasani is from South Africa. But Matias said that like Latin, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah did. he's like, he's like, but he is from South Africa. So it's, uh, it is, it is not a Latin country. Um, Alyssa Harvey, she said, it doesn't add up to us, but that is because we don't have the variables that God has put in the equations mm-hmm. and they're different from everyone else's. That's, That's awesome. Good. The variables good. that God has put in the equations. Well, see, I like that okay. too, because like I was thinking about i saw that earlier and i was thinking and i was like it's true because like a lot of times i find myself comparing like a lot and like i compare how god's working other people's lives compared to how he's working in mine and whatever and like it's easy to like get caught up in the idea of like okay why does this person get this and why does this person get that and why is it so easy for them and whatever but it's not about what's easy and what's not easy for one thing that's easy for me may not be easy for somebody else and Mm -hmm. what's hard for them is not necessarily hard for me everybody's unique and everybody has their own sort of like life that they have to live through God's word and like they have to see what benefits them and what his plan is for you. And also your struggles might be able to help somebody else that's going through worse things than you are. So like it's this common thing where like we're trying to see where things add up and we don't see the numbers the right way when in reality like the equation is just different, man. There's two many different var- variables. Which is funny because then <coughs> Dumasani had one other comment earlier in the podcast Just that goes plans. right along with this. Mm-hmm. Flames over here. Just saw something I posted a few years ago. Don't let what is blind you from what could be. It's good. That's good stuff. But tomorrow <laughs> we. Are, and back, by the way, welcome Eddie Brown back. We met Eddie last week. It was in Fleeting, man. I got I didn't get a chance to spend any time because we I was literally running out to an appointment. But um, I see his comment back in, and we we're glad you're back with us, Eddie. Um, I will say this: tomorrow we're going to wrap up Faith Factor. And um, we have we have a ton of material, so I don't know how we're going to cram it all in. We're going to figure it out. Uh, but I promise you this: let's just end this on an exclamation point tomorrow, right? And the whole the whole thing I want you to to remember and go into tomorrow with ready for your comments because we're going to include tomorrow's comments in the shirt giveaway or or, uh, or uh, merch giveaway. I want you to un- I want you to realize that factor matters. Alyssa Alyssa said it this way: equation. You don't know the variables or the equation factor. So you can't, you just don't know what the faith factor is going to produce. Mm. It changes everything. Amen. So love you guys, Mike. Song of the day today. Matias actually picked it as walk on water from elevation rhythm. It's actually a really good song. Kind of it's a bop. It's a bop. Really? All right. Matias got his ears lowered. <laughs> no, I think Matias <laughs> is just not wearing a hat for the first time. <laughs> Maybe so. He got his haircut. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday or Friday, just so I can make Ezra cringe. And on that note, we out.